Hey guys, welcome to another PyTorch tutorial. Today I'll show you a simple but powerful technique that you can use in your PyTorch code to improve the optimization process during the training. So what we want to use here is a so-called learning rate scheduler. This means that we adjust our learning rate during the training loop, either based on the number of epochs or based on validation measurements. So let's roll the intro and then I'll show you how to do this. As you should know, the learning rate is one of the most important hyperparameters that you should tweak during the training. And it's highly recommended to adjust the learning rate a little bit during the training to get better results. PyTorch provides several methods in their API to do this. And it's really not that hard to implement this in your code. So let me show you how. One thing I want to mention is that by adjusting the learning rate, most of the time we want to decrease the learning rate, so not increase it. But of course, it always depends on your specific problem. So PyTorch provides some so-called learning rate scheduler in the optimization or optim module. So let's go through the API documentation and show some examples. So here we are in the API doc of the Optim module and here in this section how to adjust the learning rate. Um, it explains how we can do this and of course I will put the link in the description. So it tells us that Torch Optim LR scheduler provides several methods to adjust the learning rate based on the number of epochs. Or we also have methods that adjust the learning rate based on some validation measurements. And we also have this important sentence, learning rate scheduling should be applied after optimizers update. So our code should look something like this. So we create a scheduler. Then we have our training loop where we have our epochs and then we do the training step. So this might be something like loss.backward then we might have a validation step and then we call scheduler.step. So it's that simple, but of course we have to create a scheduler and for this we have different options. So let's go through the documentation and then I show you the different methods we have. So the first one is the so-called lambda LR. So this sets the learning rate of each parameter group to the initial learning rate times a given function. So we might even have different parameter groups, which we don't care about for now, but you should know that then you can use multiple functions here. So what we want to do is we create a lambda function. So this is basically a one line function and this can be dependent on the epoch. So here in this example, we divide the epoch by 30. And then we create our lambda LR with an optimizer and then this lambda function that we created. So let's go to the code and let me show you an actual example. So what you want to do here is you want to import torch optim LR scheduler as LR scheduler. Then we have a learning rate. So in this case it's 0.1 in the beginning. Then we have a model, so in this case a simple linear model. Then you also need an optimizer. And then here we create this lambda function. So this is a one line function and dependent on the epoch. So we divide the epoch by 10. And then we multiply this with the initial learning rate. So in the first epoch, we have one divided by 10 times our learning rate. In the second epoch, we have two divided by 10 times our initial learning rate and so on. And then we create our scheduler like this. So we give it the optimizer and the lambda function. And in this example, our learning rate is actually increasing but in all the next examples it will be decreasing then. So then here we have our typical training loop and first of all I want to print optimizer state dict to show you how this looks like. Then here we might for example do loss.backwards then we call optimizer step then we might have some validation step and then we call this scheduler step 
And then here I want to print the actual learning rate and we can access this by calling optimizer state dict and then here we access the key param groups and here we only use one so we access this one with index zero and then we use the key learning rate so this will give us the actual learning rate so let's run this code by saying python lambda lr and then here we see we have the optimizer state dict with the initial learning rate of 0.1 and then here the first epoch we have 1 over 10 times 0.1 so we have this the second epoch we have this and so on so i hope that it's clear how this works so let's look at the next example so the next example is the so-called multiplicative lr this basically works the same but here we multiply the learning rate of each parameter group by the factor given in the specified function so again we create a lambda function that may be dependent on the epoch so here we just return a value so it actually doesn't change with the number of epochs but now this is multiplicative so each epoch this will be multiplied to the last epoch so let's go to the code again and then let's have a look at how this looks like so here we have the same code as before but now we use this multiplicative lr with simply this factor of 0.95 and then each time it will be multiplied to the last learning rate so let's print this one so let's clear this one and let's run python multi lr.py and then we see we have our initial learning rate of 0.1 then we multiply it with 0.95 which will give us 0.095 and the next one we again multiply it with 0.95 and this will give us this learning rate and then this and this and so on so again the big difference here is that here we multiply it with the learning rate and with the lambda lr we just use the initial learning rate and then multiply it with this function so then if we go further then we have the step lr this is probably the most easiest to understand so here it says it decays the learning rate of each parameter group by gamma every step size epochs so it might look something like this so we have our step lr with the optimizer then a step size and then this gamma so as i said typically we want to decrease it so we set this to something smaller than one and then here we can see for the first 30 epochs we have our initial learning rate 0.05 then we multiply it with 0.1 so we have 0.005 for the next 30 steps and then again we multiply it with our gamma so we have this learning rate for the next 30 steps and so on so yeah this is one of the simplest one but it's actually really powerful so i use this very often myself then we have this multi-step lr which decays the learning rate of each parameter group by gamma once the number of epoch reaches one of the milestones so basically here instead of um steps we just we can give it milestones and then it will do the same so here for epoch 30 it will apply our gamma then for epoch 80 it will apply our gamma and so on so this gives us a little bit more variation if we don't want to use the same step size all the time then we have this exponential lr here it decays the learning rate by gamma every epoch so this is essentially the same as the step lr if we use a step size of one here so here we simply apply this every epoch and then we don't have to care about these steps so yeah that's this one then we also have this cosine anneaning lr which i won't go over for now but you can of course have a look at that yourself and yeah but then let's have a look at 
this one again. So this one is called reduce LR on plateau. So now here, this is not dependent on the epoch, but here instead it's dependent on some measurements or metrics. So it reduces the learning rate when a metric has stopped improving. So here we want to reduce our learning rate and PyTorch tells us that models often benefit from reducing the learning rate by a factor of two be between two and 10 once learning stagnates. This scheduler here reads a metric quantity and if no improvement is seen for a patient's number of epochs, the learning rate is reduced. So what we need here is we need a optimizer, we need a mode and a factor and a patience. So the mode will be min or max. So in min mode, learning rate will be reduced when the quantity monitored has stopped decreasing. In max mode, it will be reduced when the quantity has stopped increasing. Then we need this factor. So the factor by which the learning rate will be reduced. Default is 0 0.1. And we need the patience. So how long we wait um, for no improvement. So number of epochs with no improvement after which learning rate will be reduced. For example, if patience equals two, then we will ignore the first two epochs with no improvement and will only decrease the learning rate after the third epoch if the loss still hasn't improved. So our code might look something like this. We have our optimizer. We have this reduce LR on plateau with our optimizer. And in this case, it just uses the default factor and uh, patience. And then we have our training loop where we do the training step. We calculate the loss. And after the validation, we calculate scheduler.step with this validation loss. So if this doesn't get better um, for the number of epochs we want to wait, then we reduce the learning rate. And this really can help our model to stop stagnating and further improve the optimization. So yeah, then we also have this cyclic LR and one more, I guess, this one cycle LR, which I won't go over here as well, but you can check that out for yourself. But yeah, that's what I wanted to show you for now. So again, you can go to this API documentation and then check out the different optimizers. So yeah, that's all I wanted to show you for now. Again, um, this can really help your model during the training process and it's not that hard to implement. So just pick a scheduler and try out different ones for yourself and then call the scheduler that's dot step. And yeah, then you're good to go. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you liked it, then please subscribe to the channel. And then I hope to see you next time. Bye.